What is up guys, Rekkak is here, and today we are going to be presenting a guide for how to beat tier 1 and tier 2, mainly focusing on tier 2 because it is more difficult, of the new Reckoning activity just added with the Season of the Drifter into Destiny 2. We're going to be providing an explanation of mechanics, gear recommendations, subclass recommendations, all of that stuff to help you guys beat this activity as easily as possible. Not only is Reckoning how you get Gambit Prime Armor, but it's also, at Tier 2 or above, rewarding those sweet new Gambit Prime weapons for a completion. And so, let's jump into it. Alright, first and foremost, we need to talk about modifiers. They are present in Reckoning and they're going to rotate daily. There's always going to be one Elemental Singe, as well as a positive modifier and a negative modifier. And you should look at these every single day. Something that works really well one day may not work too well the next day, but there are some universal choices that will kind of always be good. We'll talk about those later. But, for example, at the time I was recording this, it was Void Singe, Blackout, and Heavyweight. Void Singe obviously means you want to try to emphasize Void Damage in your weapons and your subclass. Blackout means that the enemies are going to do a lot more melee damage, and Heavyweight means that your Heavy does so much more damage. So obviously it's important to, you know, if I'm on the fence between two subclasses, pick the Void one, throw on a really, really good Heavy, you know, that's probably where your exotic slot should be going to emphasize that Heavy damage. Blackout, really, it's not about what you're going to use. You can't necessarily prepare your loadout for the negative modifiers. The negative modifiers are more going to impact how you play. And so because of Blackout, you need to play less aggressively. You need to not jump into a group of thralls and stuff like that because they'll absolutely murk you. You need to keep a little bit of distance. Now a couple of quick tips for these modifiers, when you see Brawler, which increases melee damage, remember that some supers like the Sentinel Titan count as melee, so prioritize those. Grenadier, there is a bunch of different exotic armor pieces that will let you have two grenades at once, and if you're the Titan, the Striker Titan, it has a subclass perk that lets you have two grenades at once. Two grenades plus Grenadier is absurd as well, so try to prioritize those beneficial modifiers when creating your build. Alright, now let's talk about the mechanics of Reckoning. At the very beginning, before the round starts, you can do a couple of things. You can wager motes to get Gambit Prime Armor. The higher rarity the motes you wager, corresponding with the higher tiers, are going to get you better and better armor. So a weak green moat at tier 1, blue moat tier 2, purple moat tier 3 is going to reward you with plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3 Gambit Prime Armor. But you also can rally a flag. This is something that so many people don't know. You can put down a raid rally flag in this little circle right here, and activating it will give you all of your super and all of your ammo. So at the start of every Reckoning round, you can go in fully kitted, ready to go, cast super right away at the very start of the round. So very important tip there. Make sure you're planting those rally flags, which you can buy from Petra in the Dreaming City, and just always getting that bonus, especially for tier two. Now in terms of the actual mechanics of the activity, tier 1 is pretty darn simple. There's a bunch of Taken that just keep spawning and you're trying to get to 100% of enemies killed. So just slay out with supers, all of that stuff, weapons. Once you get to 100%, then there's going to be a boss that spawns. You get another timer that starts. So you have a timer to get to 100%. If obviously you don't get there, it ends. But then as soon as you summon a boss, a new timer starts and then you have to kill that boss within that second timer. That's really all there is to it. The second you kill the boss, you've completed tier 1. Tier 2 is a little bit more complicated. You're going to go into the same starting area as tier 1 and again you have to slay out and get to 100%. But once you do, within that time again, you are not going to have to fight a boss. Rather, you're going to open up a new area of the map. And there's actually no timer in between from when you get to 100% and this new area. This is super important because you have to make the most of this time. I would highly recommend going around the map, picking up heavy, special, and getting orbs to make sure that you go into the next part, which is going to be much more difficult, fully kitted. 
But once you do go to that next part, you're basically gonna have to capture your way up a hill. There's six different capture zones and you only have around you know 30-ish seconds to do it. Every time you capture a zone, that timer will increase. But if not everyone is standing on that zone, if you get pushed off, if you get killed and have to respawn, it can be very easy to not capture in time and let the time expire. If the time expires, you lose on the spot. So you have to capture a zone, move slightly up the hill, capture the next zone, all the way until the sixth zone captured. All the while, you're gonna be pressured with a ton of ads and also snipers off in the distance. Now we're going to talk about how to make this part so much easier in a bit, but continuing with the mechanics, once you do capture all six zones, a portal will appear at the top of the hill, jump in here, and you're gonna be teleported to an entirely different location and two knights are going to spawn. But not normal knights, like the big sunless cell knights, and these guys will mess you up. You're gonna have to avoid them for a little bit and look for a certain targeted enemy. It's going to be called the Hermit, and you're gonna go here, kill that guy, he's gonna be glowing white, and again, there's going to be an objective marker above him. Once you kill that enemy, he's going to spawn a Well of Light, and you want to damage those two knights from the Well of Light. If you're not in here, you're going to be doing so much less damage. Now, quick tip since we're on the subject of the knights, always avoid them by going over top of them. If you try to go beside and skirt around them, they will lunge and they will get you quite a lot of the time. But if you're above them, they can't lunge upwards and they'll smack the ground and it may hurt you, but it won't kill you. Always jump over them. So, those are the mechanics of tier 1 and 2. Let's talk about how to make them super easy. Firstly, a lot of this just involves you killing ads. Killing a ton of ads either at the beginning part to get 100% or while capturing the zones. So you need supers that can really accomplish this goal. My number one recommendation, this thing will single-handedly make tier 2 go from hard and unbeatable to easy and farmable. And that is a Cataclysm Voidwalker Warlock with the Skull of Dire Ahamkara. This exotic armor piece makes it so that if you kill enemies with your Nova Bomb, you get super energy back. Similar to the Shards of Galanor before it was nerfed, similar to a lot of other exotics in the game, frankly, but the skull has not been touched, and it gives you your super back aggressively. It, you will often cast a Cataclysm Nova Bomb, which was recently buffed, by the way, wipe out like five six ads like easily kill a bunch of ads and instantly get your super back like you just get it back right away not only that but you're producing seven six orbs for your teammates so they're also casting their supers so much more seriously this combo will change your life one person running this and this is so good regardless of the featured burn you should frankly have one person running this but if you don't have access to this guy, there are some other things you can do in terms of Warlocks as well. Dawnblade with the extended duration is pretty fantastic. You can basically, especially with the 100% part and the capturing zone parts, be in your Dawnblade the entire time. You're killing so many ads, it keeps extending and it just doesn't stop. You really don't even need an exotic to let you accomplish this as well. Also, Still for the Warlock, if it's Arc Burn, for example, you can use Chaos Reach when combined with the Geomegs exotic boots. They're gonna extend the duration of it quite a bit, allowing you to really kill just a bunch of ads in one super activation. And also, they allow you that when you're at around 80 or 70% of your super, just running around will top it up really fast, so you're gonna get it more often. Uh, similarly, you can use Tickle Fingers, a Stormcaller Warlock, in combination with the Crown of Tempest. This is gonna make it last a lot longer, allowing you to just slay out an ads for just such a long period of time. Those are two other great options there. Also, for the Warlock, it's one person running Well of Radiance in combination with specifically the Phoenix Protocol exotic chess piece is very, very good. Especially when you're capturing the zones, it's gonna allow you to plant a Well of Radiance in that zone, which is really gonna help you not only get meleeed by those thralls, not only get more damage so you can slay out easier, but really help you survive those snipers. Those snipers need to be dealt with, otherwise they'll wreck your team, but someone with Phoenix Protocol, Well of Radiance can just put one down, or probably two down, 
every single time you go to a zone and it really increases your survivability. Adding one of those to your group if you're having trouble capturing those zones will often probably make the difference. Alright, now let's talk about Titans. If it's a Void Burn, a great idea is to run the Sentinel Titan with either Ursa Furiosa's. Very easy to get your super back using those by absorbing damage while blocking. Can also block the snipers and be really good there when capturing zones. Another possibility is the Doomfang Pauldrons, exotic gauntlets with again Sentinel. Those extend the duration every time you get a multi-kill with a thrown shield. There's so many enemies, it's almost impossible not to get the multi-kill. I've had people using them where they go the entire time you're going from 0 to 100% at the beginning area with one super activation. They never stop being in their super for that entire time. So very good there. Hammer Titans are just good overall, frankly. But also something you should consider is... The Syntheseps Exotic Gauntlets, which are going to increase super damage by a considerable amount, I think it's like 50% while you're in range of multiple enemies. Well, guess what? You're always in range of multiple enemies within this activity. For the Hunter, some things I would recommend. All right, regardless of the modifiers, adding a Tether Hunter with especially the Orpheus Rig Exotic Boots is going to help your team dramatically. It's almost impossible to not get your tether back. If you get even a half decent one, it's going to hit like four or five enemies every single time. And it's going to produce a ton, a ton of orbs. If you can see from the background gameplay, the reason we're able to succeed, the reason you can overcome and really start farming tier two is from chaining supers. One guy gets a great super kill, produces a bunch of orbs, the next guy picks up those orbs, uses his supers. Like if you are constantly casting supers, that is how you beat Reckoning Tier 2. But it's easier said than done, frankly, and all of these gear recommendations are super important to be running these certain combinations in order to make the most of your supers, help yourself get that super energy back as quickly as possible so you don't require a ton of orbs and all of that stuff. So this is why I'm really going in depth with these recommendations. But you know, continuing with the hunter here, something else if you already have a tether hunter, like if you have one hunter in your group, it should be tether with Orpheus. Like it's so, so good. But if you have multiple, someone running Blade Barrage, especially with the Shards of Galanor to get it back, that's gonna be very helpful. Something even like Arc Staff with the Radiant Flux so it lasts so much longer can also be quite beneficial. But in terms of all of those different examples, if I was to pick like a perfect group, I wanted to give you guys a ton of options because I know not everyone has every exotic and has every single class leveled up. But if I was to create a perfect group, it would be a Warlock with the Cataclysm Nova Bomb and Skull of Dire Ahamkara, a Warlock with Phoenix Protocol and Well of Radiance, a Hunter with Tether, and then a flex slot. Like the fourth guy can be whatever, maybe a Titan. Honestly, another Warlock with Nova Bomb would probably be the best here. Now moving on from there, let's go over some weapon recommendations. So again, your main purpose is to slay out on ads, but every once in a while, those ads are going to be pretty powerful and pretty problematic to take down. You're gonna have a lot of yellow bars in every single part of a tier two run. At the beginning, getting to 100%, you're gonna have, frankly, mini bosses more powerful than the regular yellow bars. When you're capturing the zones, you always have yellow bars spawning all the time, and at the very end, killing those knights and killing them very fast is very, very important. So what weapons can you use to make the most of this? Well, in terms of like a primary weapon, that should be focused on slaying out on large groups of ads. Something like an auto rifle with rampage is really what you're looking for. Try to use something masked worked if you can so that you can produce orbs and get your supers. Your supers are gonna be frankly more beneficial at killing stuff than any of your weapon slots. So if your weapons can create more super usages, that's what you want. In terms of secondary weapons, well, stuff that can kill large groups of ads or really focus fire on singleton ads, again, for those yellow bars, is fantastic. So the Jotun fusion rifle is a great one. The Telesto fusion rifle is another fantastic one just to kill a large group of ads. Shotguns that can take down, you know, those yellow bars can be very beneficial. 
I really wouldn't recommend running something like a bow or a sniper rifle. Yes, a sniper can be good against the snipers that appear in the capture part, but it's just too niche. Most of the time you're gonna be rumbling pretty close range and the Jotun actually is fantastic for taking down those snipers, huge tip there. Now for your heavy weapon, there's a lot of good options. I was using the curated raid rocket launcher from Scourge of the Past. Uh, it had tracking and cluster bomb. Fantastic for taking down a lot of these enemies. Like rocket launchers are quite good because they do a lot of damage against the singleton targets you know the knights of the end and all of that stuff but they also can clear out a group of ads they've got that dual flexibility something else like the acreus or legend of acreus shotgun is going to be pretty darn good here the wardcliffe coil has received a huge over 100 percent buff it's fantastic here but you do actually kill yourself pretty often while using it it's nonetheless powerful though and lastly, something I think people might sleep on is machine guns. Now, they did receive a recent nerf, unfortunately, but the Thunderlord and the Hammerhead and even the Avalanche are still all fantastic, especially when there's heavyweight. The amount of adds you can kill with heavyweight around, like it's a one-shot headshot kill with heavyweight, and we we're talking about 60-round magazines. You blow through enemies with machine guns, so remember that. Also, using something like the Thunderlord to clear out adds lets you use like a scout rifle as your primary to take down those snipers, for example. All right, so those are my tips and recommendations on what to use to make tier two of Reckoning and tier one substantially easier. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.